As the general elections draw near, the Nigerian political scene is teeming up with activities ranging from campaigns to other strategic electoral procedures. But despite these activities, as well as several enlightenment programs, voting in Nigeria is still being characterized by voided votes, where a significant number of votes are reportedly rendered uh, invalid. That's not all. The issue of voter migration is another challenge. As some electorate may be disadvantaged on the grounds of proximity and location on election day. Now, the big question is, how do we tackle this challenge? What can INEC do to avert voter disenfranchisement on the account of voter migration? Is the electorate fully aware of the implications of migration in this forthcoming national exercise? Addressing these and other issues will form the discourse on today's edition of Nigeria Today. I am Anne Jibuno. Welcome to the program. In the studio with me to discuss the issue of voter migration is Lazarus Apu. He is an election expert. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Anne. And uh, Lazarus is also of the Center for Democracy and Development. Now, how would you assess the level of uh, literacy, voter literacy, given that the elections are so close? I think. Um Historically, if we take some steps back and look at the numbers in terms of what the voting has been across the last five general elections, you would see that uh, the voter literacy in Nigeria is not very impressive. Take for instance in 2015, on the average 22,000 votes were invalid across all 36 states and the FCT. Uh, if you put 22,000 votes across the country together, that may, and, and it adds to some candidate, that may have changed the outcome in some sense. If you look at the voter turnout again across five elections, again you would see that it's been very low and it's been on a steady decline already, which means that a lot of citizens or a lot of registered voters as compared to number of registered voters and those actually going to vote, you will see that they are not literate about the importance of election enough and so they are sitting at home. Even for the few that want to go to the polls, some of them are not voting right. And for some analysts, even in the choices they make, the candidates they elect, because of how they turn out to not bring good governance, it means they did not vote right even to that extent. So if you look at all these um, uh, factors, you will see that voter literacy in Nigeria is not very impressive. Now, the, um, the political parties are the direct beneficiaries of this vote. How involved are they? And uh, these sensitization programs, do they really get to the hinterland? I'm very happy you brought up that question because it's, as, as one who's spend the last decade working on elections. That has been one of my, my loudest call. The people who stand to benefit the votes in Nigeria the most are the ones least involved in voter education, for instance. Civil society get huge grants and commit to voter education. INEC that is already overwhelmed with organizing election spends chunk of her time also undertaking voter education. If you go around the country now, over radios and television channels, most of what you hear in terms of voter education is either from civil society, INEC, or the National Orientation Agency. The political parties barely are, are, are throwing jabs at each other. A few of them that want to even do something in the light of voter education is basically calling for votes to their candidate, regardless of whether the person knows how to vote. Now, I, I was about getting to that uh, particular point. Where, how do we separate politics from sensitization? Where do you draw the line? I think um, the line has been drawn largely for a lot of other stakeholders like the civil society, the INEC itself, and some other institutions involved with enlightenment. But for the political parties especially, because they have not been able to build their political parties to be very 
uh, viable institutions that can have these departments that are focusing on these aspects of the electoral process. They all exist to just do primaries, win elections, see how they can share the spoils for some, for some actual governance, and then another electoral cycle. If you go into the structures of the political parties as they currently as, uh, exist, you will not find a department that is very viable called Voter Education Department. It doesn't exist. Their media teams also exist for bashing the opponents and calling for votes to their party. So uh, I think for the political parties who, and, and it turns out that they are the ones who have the most exposure to voters because they undertake nationwide campaigns. Imagine they spare a moment of that time to actually enlighten voters on how to vote correctly about the procedure for election day and, and, and how to thumb the ballot right and all of this. It will be a huge impact. You interface with political parties all the time. How do you, how have you been able to bring this, you know, throw this uh, up? In, in, in for every front. single election we have observed, we make recommendations to political parties, to even other election observers, to INEC, to the security and to political parties and we make sure they get this, these uh, recommendations. We also do advocacy to them to let them know that it's not a do or die affair, we are observing the election to ensure it complies with the process and is fair and credible. But it turns out that um, they don't want to go that direction yet, as it were. Because if it is in terms of advocacy, sufficient of it has been made to them. But they seem to not just be changing. And for me, like I have said a couple of times, one of the stakeholders that has least changed or improved in the engagement of elections in Nigeria are the political parties. All right, let's now go back to the voter. On election day, we, of course, we know in Nigeria, movement is restricted. And uh, many of these uh, voters are registered quite f far from their residence. Uh, how do we solve this challenge? Wouldn't it amount to disenfranchisement? And what do we do here? It actually amounts to disenfranchisement. And I have searched the laws, and I can't find anywhere that is unlawful that people move on election day but it's it's this is nigeria as a popular phrase goes but be that as well we already know that movement is restricted on that day and so people are supposed to if they are excited about the leadership emergence process which is election and they want to be a part of it uh, I will speak for, from experience. I usually move out as early as 6 in the morning every election day, regardless of the role I'm playing, whether it is to vote or to go and observe. So if you, if you see the voters that come out consistently, they always come out very early in the day and they stay put at the polling unit. So I, I don't know of voters who live two hours away from their polling units. But if you live by 6, and polling units are supposed, or election is supposed to commence by 8 in the morning. You will make it to your polling unit and vote. But again, for anyone who genuinely is going to vote and has a voter card and actually says my polling unit is this distance, I will be very uh, shocked that some security agents would stop them from making that journey to the polling unit. But it's, it's neither here nor there. But the solution to that is to ensure that security is sufficient so that if someone is moving not to vote but to distract they can be addressed but for those moving to go and vote they can make their journey and whatever time they arrive they should be able to vote i think it's 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 it's, it's unlawful to stop people from moving on election day now why do you think voter um migration has escalated in nigeria who should be held responsible for this uh, in the context of voter migration, where people are moving away from certain locations yes, to safe I mean. locations, then it's because of the Nigerian uh, polarized setup right now. We are polarized on religion, we are polarized on ethnicity. People have no problem living and earning a living in other parts of the country. But when it comes to election, we are so polarized that if someone from a certain 
ethnic extraction loses election, it's taken out on people who are not from that area because it's perceived they were the ones who voted against the person or voted elsewhere. Because if all of them were people of this, this ethnicity, they would have voted in one direction. But that again speaks to the voter illiteracy. We have rights. The right to make your choice at election is equal to your right to being alive. So for anyone who is, who is opposed to anybody's choice for a candidate in an election is simply just being an illiterate. So again, the issue of safety. Sometimes the men or the adults don't have problem, but because they need to take their children away from these volatile areas. And this too is historic. There are locations in Nigeria that historically since 99 to date have been very volatile at elections. So people have, in quotes, justifiable cause to migrate away from such areas at election times only to return after elections when it's come. All right. Um, before we, we, we're going to be hearing from Nigerians very soon. In fact, I think we should uh, go to the street to hear uh, what Nigerians have to say on this matter. Mostly, I would say it's mo mobility. Um, you'll find out that on those particular days when people are expected to vote, you'll be surprised to find out that there'll be no movement as a result of the fact that you're expected to vote in a particular place where you registered. Unfortunately, some persons, for one reason or the other, moves from one place to the other because of some things that might come up, maybe health issues, family-related issues, businesses and many other things and the day for election comes and you're trying to like wonder how do you now return back to the particular place you registered simply because you have to vote so I, I think it's possible for us to even with the current system make it possible for you to vote anywhere because if you have the records if truly people have been registered and the PVC stands as your identification you should be able to vote anywhere if you collect your voter's card or in FCT here, or you, you, you register here, it's, it, it will be very good for Nigerians to move from one place or from one state or from lo one local government to another. So that because the voter's card is carrying your name, is carrying your face, is carrying your thumbprint, and as it's carrying that, nobody can use that except you. So it should be free and fair to people to be able to vote anywhere in Nigeria. Concerning that aspect, I think INEC should make it like a universal thing. Let's say you register in Abuja, you should be able to vote in Lagos, maybe uh, because uh, you are transferred or maybe you need to relocate due to one thing or the other. And another aspect that right now that is happening is that it's not number of people that have registered, it's number of people that have actually collected this, this uh, v, uh, PVC. Since somebody has a voter's card to go to anywhere, and provided the card is, you know, genuine, they should be uh, allowed to vote. People should be allowed to vote. Uh, the challenge is like um, when you are in a particular community and it happen, now happens that you moved or maybe, in one, maybe, uh, maybe something costs you to like move from that particular location. So if, they, uh, if, they, if there is no way you can go back to that uh, previous one. So if I neck and a kind of, if they can have a means of uh, making it possible for one to vote in the place where he has moved to because the difficulty of going there at times they will even tell you they can't find your your name in the new place so if they, if they can if they can find a means of uh, making it possible for voters to get their this is like their pvc or whatever to vote to be able to vote in the new place i think it will be better Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Nigeria Today, and we are discussing voter migration. And I still have uh, Lazarus Appear. He is an election expert. Now you've uh, listened to what uh, the respondents had to say. They are all in agreement that uh, the process should be centralized. Is that practical, practicable? It is. We, if you look at the electoral process of Nigeria, it is almost more than 80% uh, gone technological. You register through technology, you are accredited via technology in the card reader, 
Even the process of collecting results electronically is being piloted for 2019. It is just the term printing and the issuance of ballot paper that is, it is manual. What stops us from upgrading the card readers to be devices that can read and, and, and allow anybody to vote anywhere? Because the most important thing is you are a registered voter and you have a right to vote. Your right to vote is not tied to your location. But this is how we try to be smart by half. We have taken so much technology, but we are not allowing technology to help us. That's how I see it. Look at the, the number of Nigerians who are legitimately living outside Nigeria. Some of them even working for the Nigerian government, but they cannot vote at elections because they are in one consulate office in a foreign country. Look at the security people who are doing very wonderful duties for this country. But because they have left the barracks, probably where they registered, and they are somewhere trying to stop insurgency in, 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 in Northeast, they cannot vote. And nobody is even piloting anything to allow that process to begin to come. So you see, uh, someone relocates. If you look at the process of transfer of voter, it's there. If you go through the pains, of course, you will be able to transfer and vote in another location. But how many people have the time to even do that? And how smooth is even that process? I know even a neighbor of mine was asking me just yesterday if his transfer has been successful. So you see, the, we are using technology, but we are still disenfranchising ourselves, and it's not right. Now, how how would you rate INEX um, efforts in collaboration with other agencies in addressing these, uh, these challenges that uh, you've mentioned? I think um, they are trying. Uh, the other day, just the other day, uh, they, they had a program where they were saying they are even collaborating with the university commission to ensure that schools, universities don't close uh, so that undergraduates or students who registered within the school community but as it is the custom or the tradition people go home at uh, election times and then don't get to vote because maybe some of them live in other states and so they are trying to see so in that sense that's a good move to try to term voter migration in that context so that's good uh, but to the extent of uh, getting these process of wherever you are with your PVC and a device like the card reader you should be able to vote. I think they are very close on that. Um, it's not it's not happening yet. All right now um, what what more should we do to address these feeding problems or will I say feeding problems because uh, we, are, we probably have gone beyond that. It is because uh, first and foremost to think that Nigeria has a population of about 180 million and counting and you only have 84 million plus registered voters tells you a lot more needs to be done to even get people registered for those who are registered look at the millions of PVC unclaimed yet again that speaks to another challenge for those who have even collected the PVC how many are coming out to actually vote? And then you have the problem of those who want to vote, but because they have changed location, they are unable to vote. And this is genuine. Someone has married and relocated. Someone has left for school. Someone is uh, hospitalized, but at least can go to a polling unit close by and vote. And yet they are not able to vote. So if you look at all of this, then time has come for us to allow technology to help us. We have embraced it, we should allow it to help us. With the help of these devices that are ascertaining the authenticity of the PVC and, and verifying that the owner of the PVC is indeed the owner of the PVC, location should not be above that. I think the identity of the voter, once confirmed, supersedes anything, not location. So I think technology will help us in this regard. Now, as a member of the civil society, the elections are just in right. February, almost in fact, they are here. Or 37 days. Yes. So, how ready are you for these elections? What, what more should civil society groups be doing at this time to address this voter migration and 
other issues you've raised? Of course, uh, it can. With with the kind of population we are dealing with, it can never be enough. Otherwise, I would have just said the civil society have done very well and we seem to be in a good place to engage the elections of 2019. But still, considering that uh, voter migration is still a problem and, and, and several other challenges of um, electoral violence and, and the likes, and hate speech and all manner of um, fake news going on around the elections, I think the civil society can still do more by lending the voice to to call on those doing these kind of things to stop them and for a process that is more inclusive i think uh, the civil society can still hammer more on voter education to ensure that at least the few that are coming to vote do not have their votes voided all right uh, any final words for the electorate on the importance of this uh, exercise yeah i think um we can now uh, overemphasize the importance of participation. Every Nigerian who is registered to vote should go and get their PVC. And when you do get your PVC, know that even the quality of the water you drink is determined by those in leadership. And so every Nigerian should go out and vote in this 2019 election. And it's not just the national elections or the Senate or the gubernatorial elections down to the state assembly elections. So we have a lot to do to fix this country. And for us electorates, it starts by the quality of leaders we put in office. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, uh, Lazarus Appel, election expert. And uh, he's also of the Center for Democracy and Development. Thank you for your comments today. Thank you for having me. Well, that's uh, Nigeria Today on uh, the NTA News 24. You can watch this edition of the program and others on uh, online on www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News 24 hub. See you again next time for more on the program. I am Anne Jibuno. Thanks for watching. <laughs>